Let's fucking do this! These are the top 10 best games of 2018. Twenty eighteen. Wow. What an amazing year for games. I usually tend to say that every single year, but I'm telling you guys, this year in particular had some of the best games I have ever played in my entire life, and I am super excited to make this video. And as with all top ten lists, this one in particular is concrete. It is factual. This is not opinionated, this is completely Fact. This is the truth. Anyone that disagrees with this list is invalid. Now, of course, guys, I'm being completely sarcastic. This list is my personal one. It's totally biased. There's a 99% chance that our opinions are going to be different. And that's fine. It's great to have different opinions. Nothing wrong with that. It's just that these games in particular are the ones that personally hit hard home right here just for me these are the games that i'm gonna look back a few years from now and go man that was an amazing experience what a time for games that year was Whew. so this is completely my own personal opinion the games that got me personally emotionally invested in caring about the gameplay the story the characters Every aspect about the game is what contributes to how I wrote this list. So not only is this list just my own personal opinion, but I'm just one person. I haven't been able to play every single solitary game that released this year. So because of that, there's probably not going to be a game or two that you guys probably wanted to be on this list, but it's not there simply because I haven't played it. That includes games like Hitman 2. I'm sure it's definitely worthy to be on this list from all the great things I've heard about it. Unfortunately, I just haven't been able to play that one, so therefore, games like that and other ones that have come out this year that I haven't been able to play just won't be on this list. And are any of these games perfect? No, absolutely not. Not saying anything like that. But these are the types of games for me that I'm going to look back on and look at as milestones for other developers and publishers to look at and really look at these as where I really think that the gaming industry should be looking at going forward in the development process. So with all those fucking disclaimers out of the way, let's get right into it! No. Coming in at number 10 is Detroit Become Human. I gotta tell you guys, this one really took me by a surprise just because these types of games I'm not really hugely into or there's not a whole lot of actual gameplay, it's mostly just walking around and clicking on stuff. Not really a big fan of those, but I gotta say, a friend of mine really pushed me to try this one out, so I said, ah, fuck it, I'll try it out. So glad I did. This was an emotional roller coaster from start to finish, and this is one of those games where you really get invested in all three of these characters that are really important to the story. This is also a game where if you pick a specific choice, that choice has consequences, and none of the choices in this game are easy. Whenever a character dies, man, you feel it. You feel it, man. Even though there's a way to keep all characters alive at the end, it's not easy to do. The voice acting was great, story was great, the writing was great, music was great, and overall, I think that's one of the best create your own story games that I've played this year, maybe even ever of the games of this specific type. So props to the people that made this one. And coming in at number 9, we have Far Cry 5. For those of you that don't know, I'm a huge fan of Far Cry 3. I thought Far Cry 4 was okay, but it was basically just Far Cry 3.5, really just a copy and paste of Far Cry 3. However, Far Cry 5, I think, is definitely a step forward in the right direction. It basically perfected the gameplay that Far Cry 3 established. The world you're, that you're in is amazing. There's tons of content in the game, and there are really fun ways to explore the map. Surprisingly, the story is really good. This is one of the few games where I actually sympathized with the antagonists. I usually don't question the line between good and evil, however this game really really blurs that and really kind of makes you almost side with the bad guys, you could even call them that, which I gotta give props to. It was The story was actually really well written. And not just that, but playing this game with a buddy is so much fun. I know that's pretty much how every game is, but with this one in particular, just being able to freely explore the map with your friend, I think it's a co-op experience that nobody should miss. Yeah.
And coming at number eight is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, I did like Rise of the Tomb Raider a little bit more than this game. I just thought the story in that one was a little bit stronger. Nevertheless, this is a strong addition in the Tomb Raider reboot series. And I'm kind of worried because this game didn't sell that well, so I'm concerned if they're really going to stop the reboot series here. If they did, I'd be disappointed, but I understand. But if they continue, I'd be really excited about that. What I really appreciate about this game is how there's less emphasis on combat and a stronger emphasis on exploration. There's way more tombs to explore this time around. The graphics have never been better in any prior Tomb Raider game. There'd be so many times where I'd be walking around and I would just have to pause the game and just stare at it or just use photo mode to take in the incredible sights. The game probably took me twice as long to beat just because I was too busy just looking at stuff. It was that pretty. And the voice acting cast did a surprisingly good job. I think this is actually their best work yet. And there are certain parts where cutscenes are playing out that are really emotionally heavy. And you're just like, ooh, man. This is rough. This is this is some rough stuff, man. And I love that. Overall, a solid Tomb Raider experience from beginning to end. I really hope they continue it, but if not, I think this is a strong conclusion to this series. Number seven, we have Dragon Ball Fighter Z. How could this not be on this list? I mean, this is one of the most solid fighting Dragon Ball games I have ever played. It's so simplistic, yet it just works so well. And I think one of the biggest things that is hooking with this one is just how addictive it is. The combat is solo, the combos are pretty easy to pull off, and graphics aren't everything, but man, this game looks pretty for a cartoony look. I mean, just take any still image from this game and it's pretty much gonna look like the end Anime. It's that impressive. It's filled with vibrant colors and they nailed the sound effects. The, the original voice cast is back and they're better than ever. Not only that, but playing this game with friends is just a joy to be had. Six. And at number six is Monster Hunter World. Now, I like to say that I have not played any prior Monster Hunter game, but man. I am so happy that this is my first entry into this franchise and this game has made me want to go back and play the other Monster Hunter games because it's just that good. I was not expecting a game this early on in 2018 to hook me in as much as this one did. This is a game where you really have complete freedom control to defeat these monsters to the best of your ability. Do you want to run in with a heavy shield and try to take the monster head on? Do you want to stay back, use your bow and arrow or other ranged attacks? Do you want to lay out some traps for them, especially for the really challenging enemies? I mean, I could spend hours telling you guys the different methods I try to defeat certain certain monsters and each one you really have to study carefully because each specific monster has a weakness, each have their own specific strengths. I mean the different systems they put in place for how to defeat these monsters is really compelling. This is also a game that has a shit ton of content and I put over 50 hours in and I'm nowhere near close to the end. There's so much stuff in this game that you really gotta be devoted to it. Hell, I know people that are still playing it right now coming into 2019 that still haven't beaten the story yet. <laughs> That's how much content is in this game, and really, it is kind of set up to be an infinite experience. Which really surprised me. I knew it was going to be an RPG game of sorts, but I thought it would just be going from quest to quest with the occasional side quest. There's a lot more to it than that. So if you guys are in RPGs with really intricate systems where you have to figure out specific ways to be your enemies, and you're willing to devote a shit ton of your time into one game, Monster Hunter World is the game for you. And now it's time for the top five games of 2018. And man, these are the ones that really, really hit me close to home, man. These were actually really hard to pinpoint exactly where I wanted them to go. But coming at number five is Assassin's Creed Odyssey. This Assassin's Creed game, it combines the best elements of Black Flag, Origins and past Assassin's Creed games that fans have loved and they've taken out stuff that fans didn't love and they try to make it the best Assassin's Creed game they possibly could. A lot of people were saying that this is a slightly better version of Origins, but no, I'm telling you guys, this is a 
much, much bigger improvement over Origins. And I really liked Origins. It was on my top 10 best games of 2017. And this game, it's Origins kind of, but much better. The world is massive, there's tons of stuff to do. Usually when I would be going from one quest to another, I would constantly get stopped by, ooh, what's that over there? Or, ooh, what's that over there? There's so much stuff to do in the game, not just quests and side quests, but different areas to explore, bandit camps, caves, you get to hunt legendary animals. I've put over 90 hours into this game, and there's still large regions of the map that I have, I have not even been to yet. That's just mind-boggling. This game is enormous. And the story is surprisingly really good. Not just the main story, but even some of the side quests almost have their own mini-story, and that really surprised me. I found myself really emotionally invested, not just with the main characters and the people surrounding the characters, but even the people you meet along the way in side quests, you really emotionally care about them, and that's something that I was not expecting. The writing in this game is actually pretty damn good. I mean, this is what, probably the 13th, 14th Assassin's Creed game? And I think it might be the best. And I've only played through it once, 90 plus hours, but I, I gotta play it through again. I'm telling you guys, if you haven't tried it yet because you're skeptical about the Assassin's Creed franchise, please, I beg you to play it. It, it is just, man, you're gonna love it, trust me. <laughs> Coming in at number 4, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I'm a diehard Smash fan, been playing them since the original on N64, haven't looked back ever since, and man, they really nailed it with this one with the vast amount of characters you can play as. Just the insane amount of content that they put into this game. There's no DLC, like you get the full package when you get this game. I know, it's crazy to think that nowadays, but they pulled it off. Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of characters, shit ton of stages, and so much more to this. I could spend hours talking to you guys about how much stuff there is in this game. Even the adventure mode, which some people were not really excited about because the one in Brawl, I've heard a lot of people didn't really care for that. And this one, I really enjoyed it personally. I think that they really nailed it in terms of creating this continuous story while meeting these insane amount of characters. And I know I'm bringing it up again, but playing this game with friends, this is probably the best game to play with friends that's been released in 2018. In fact, this is one of the best split screen games that I've played in years. Each character plays very uniquely. Fighting styles are fast, fluent, Everything's totally responsive, and I think this may just be the best Super Smash Bros. game that's ever been made. If you guys don't have a Nintendo Switch, I'm telling you, you need to get it just for this game. It is that damn good. Uh, this game did not fail to disappoint. Spider-Man for the PS4. This is easily the best Spider-Man game I've ever played, and that's saying a lot because I played a lot of them, have enjoyed a lot of them that have been released in the past, but this one I think is the best. In a way, this is almost like Spider-Man 2 that came out in 2004, but way better. <laughs> Web swinging feels great, it's responsive, it's smooth, it's addictive, the combat is super satisfying, especially when you get to unlock more suit powers. The city itself is huge and very detailed. The story was awesome. I never thought I would see a Spider-Man game like this, where basically all of the things that I've dreamt of as a child that I've wanted to be in a Spider-Man game are in this one, pretty much. And you can tell that this game was made with a lot of passion and a lot of love for the source material, and it just bleeds off of the screen. And you can tell because they had so much fun with it, that makes us have so much fun with it too. I mean really, the only complaint I have about this game is when it ended. <laughs> I wanted to keep going. Well that and I thought that the uh, Mary Jane stealth missions were a little bit bland. I don't know why they really needed to be there, but they weren't bad per se. But overall, an incredible Spider-Man experience from start to finish. 
and I really hope there's a sequel. I also really hope that Insomniac goes through with the rumors that they're going to be creating sort of a Marvel video game universe, hence the Avengers Tower and Doctor Strange locations in the game. And I really hope that happens because that would be epic. Either way, I'm super excited to see what they do next. Two. Oof, now one and two were super hard. These are probably the hardest ones to organize out of any top 10 list I have ever done. I spent hours going back and forth, back and forth. This one should be here, maybe this one should be here. Needless to say, it was extremely close, and they are practically tied with one another, but this is a list, so of course there can only be one winner, but just know that number one, barely won over number two. Just, just barely. Number two goes out to God of War. I don't know what I need to say about this game, it's not already been said. I mean, this is practically... A flawless game. I was not expecting a God of War reboot to be at this caliber. This really impressed me. I mean, just from the art direction where the game is a single shot from start to finish, the combat feels good and brutal. Like, it really feels like you're Kratos just slicing the shit out of everything. The game looks great. You can tell they spent so many years making it look as good as possible. The story is great and told in a very interesting and emotional way. Plus, this game has some of the best memes I have ever seen on the internet. Boy. <laughs> but all jokes aside, I was hard pressed to find anything wrong with this game really. The only really big complaint I have is, well, again, when it ended of course, because I wanted it to keep going. And that's pretty much it really. So how could you top a game like that? Well, In my personal number one favorite game of 2018, of course, goes to Red Dead Redemption 2. Guys, I have been waiting for this game for over eight years, super anticipating it, and my expectations were through the roof for this game, and when it came out, it met all of my expectations, and in some areas even surpassed them. That's saying a lot because usually when I have high expectations for a game, they are very, very difficult to overcome. And the fact that this one was even able to meet them, much less exceed them in some areas, that's a strong feat, man. I mean, the game looks great, it plays great, all the mechanics that are intertwined with each other, they really work. The world itself is massive, super detailed, you're constantly going to be finding something to do. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this game has the best written protagonist that Rockstar has ever made in any of their games. Ever. I think Arthur Morgan is an even better protagonist than John Marston. And I thought that would never happen because I really liked John Marston in the first Red Dead. But the fact that they made me love this character even more, that is saying a lot. And if you think about it, this is the story about outlaws who do a bunch of illegal things like killing people, robbing banks. But the story is written in a way where you're emotionally invested. And every single one of the characters, every single time something bad would happen to any of these characters, like, I felt really sad about it. And not only was the story great, this game has some of the best open world exploration I've ever experienced in a game. There's so much minute detail in this game, when you really look into it, it's insane. Like, if you come across a random person on the side of the road that needs help, and if you go over and help them, a few hours later into the game, you might run across them again and they'll be like, Hey, thanks for saving me. Hey, do you want to get a free gun? It's on me. Or, hey, here's some money I want to give you that I feel that I owe you for saving my life. Or committing a crime in a town and serving your time in prison and going back and then that same person that you robbed will remember you and be like, You better not pull that off with me again. You fuck face. And I'm sure all of you are probably wondering why I think this game is a pinch better than God of War. Well, 
It's mainly because I just really like the open world experience and I do love God of War. However, I think that's more of a semi open world type of game. What I mean by that is there's certain areas that are limited, that are very linear. You can only go in certain areas. But in Red Dead 2, you can pretty much go wherever you want at any time. And not only that, but the vast amount of content that is in this game. I mean, I put over 100 hours into this game. There's still a shit ton of stuff I have yet to see and do. And apart from the online, which I do think has quite a few issues that need to be ironed out before that's released, the single player aspect of Red Dead 2 is one of the best experiences I've ever had playing a single player game in my life. So if you guys haven't played Red Dead 2 because you're skeptical about it, you're not quite sure if it's worth the hype, just take it from me. I really think it's one of the best games you'll play at least this generation. I'm telling you it's that fucking good. Well guys, that wraps up my top 10 best games of 2018. I would love to hear what your guys' favorite games of 2018 were. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys when I do my top 10 worst games of 2018. And oh boy, I got some things to say in that one. <laughs> If you enjoyed my video, feel free to smash that like button, and as always, be sure to subscribe.